Aloha! Truth tables are a valuable tool for digital design. They are one way of representing a logic operation, whether simple or complex, and are perhaps the most direct way to explain logic to someone else. Let's explore them in this video. Truth tables show the result of a logic operation for every possible combination of input values. I emphasize that word every because it is important. If someone makes a statement like, this light turns on when one of these two switches are on, it provides some information but not all the information about the situation. What happens when both switches are on? What happens when both switches are off? A truth table needs to demonstrate all of the possibilities. Up top we see an example truth table. This one happens to have two input variables and three output variables. A logic operation, and thus a truth table, can have any number of inputs and outputs. Each variable gets its own column in a truth table, with inputs in the left section and outputs on the right. If there are multiple outputs, like in this example, they each are functions of the inputs, but operate independently of the other outputs. In other words, the value of Q depends on X and Y, but not on R. Why are there four rows? Because there are two input variables. The number of input variables dictates how many possible input combinations there are, and one row is used for each input combination. With this example, we need to know the behavior when both X and Y are false, when they both are true, and in each case where just one of them is true. The easiest way to guarantee that you cover every possible combination is to write the input values as a straight binary count. Here, if you interpret these two bits as a binary number, they would equate to 0, then 1, then 2, and then 3 in decimal. The general equation for number of rows in a truth table as a function of number of input variables is shown here. So, two inputs means four rows, three inputs means eight rows, four inputs means sixteen rows. In a case with, say, seven input variables, the number of rows would be two to the seven, or 128. The tables can get large quickly. Over the next few slides will be three examples of building our own truth tables from logic statements. It is recommended that you pause the video after each problem assignment and try it for yourself. Truth tables are foundational to this course, so you will want to practice with them early and often. Okay, first situation. A saying I learned in business school was this. Price, quality, service. Pick two. This means that a business will be successful if it achieves two and only two of those qualities. Why not all three? Because that's impossible. For example, you can't keep your prices low if you maintain high quality products and excellent customer service. Now to make a truth table, go through these four steps. Define your input and output variables as single letters. Draw a blank table with the appropriate number of rows. Fill in the input columns with zeros and ones as a straight binary count. And finally, consider the logic to fill in the output column. Pause the video now so you can complete these steps. Here we see my version of the truth table. But the table itself means nothing without the variable definitions. I decided to let P represent whether or not the business focuses on having a good price. A zero would mean no it doesn't, and a one would mean yes it does. I define the other input similarly, and for the output variable, a dollar sign, a one would represent that the business is successful. Then I build the table starting with labeling the inputs and output section. Under these I write the individual variable names. Then I fill in the input combinations as a straight binary count. First row would be decimal zero, second row is decimal one, next row is decimal two, and so on up through decimal seven. Of course I end with eight total rows because there were three input variables. Finally, everything is set up so we can consider the logic. In each row where I see two input ones, I know that the business will be successful. So in these rows, I write an output one. 
In all other rows, I write an output zero. That is it. We built our first truth table from a logic statement. Next example. In a certain class, the professor tells you that there are two ways you can pass. Either pass the final exam or pass both midterm projects. Of course, if you pass all three, that works as well. Now, pause the video and walk through the same steps as last example to build a truth table. As a bonus, consider how you might express this logic algebraically. Give it a shot. Here is what I came up with. I defined the variables as you see over here. M1 and M2 use subscripts to make it very clear what they mean. In every variable, a 1 will represent a passing grade. Again, there are three input variables, so the truth table has eight rows. The input values form a binary count from 0 through 7. To complete the output column, there are two main components to consider. The first is if the student passes the final exam. In every case where f equals 1, then g should equal 1. So we fill all those in. The second component is if the student passes both midterm projects. So in every case where both m1 and m2 equal 1, then g should equal 1. All remaining rows have g equals 0. Note this bottom row in which the student passes all three projects or exams. The output is still just true. It does not become extra true. Now for the bonus step of converting the situation into an algebraic equation. Let's rephrase the original statement into the words you see here. We should get an overall pass if you pass the final or pass both midterms. Now simply translate this into symbols. Overall pass is defined as G. If becomes this equal sign. The final is replaced with F. The symbol for OR is a plus sign, and both midterms becomes M1 ANDed with M2. Why AND? Because AND logic requires all inputs to be true for the output to be true. Whether we write this logic in the original full sentence, in this truth table, or in this equation, we are saying the same thing. Alright, one more example. Steve has decided to narrow down his options in finding a wife. He says that he will only ask a girl on a date if she has all of these characteristics. Makes good cookies. Is an engineering student. Has a GPA of at least 3.0. And did not grow up in Texas. Pause the video and try this yourself, including an attempt at an algebraic representation. Here is my approach. I chose the arbitrary variable names A, B, C, D, and Z. I defined 0 as a no and 1 as a yes to each of these questions. Then I built a truth table. Since there are 4 input variables, I needed 16 rows. Thank goodness Steve doesn't have even more requirements. Still, the inputs follow a binary count from decimal 0 at the top through decimal 15 at the bottom. It may help you in filling out these tables to identify the pattern of doubling bit periods. The least significant bit alternates every one row. The column over alternates every two rows. Next column, it is every four rows. And last column is every eight rows, or half of the whole table. Whatever strategy you use to write these tables, double check the number of rows you get in the end. Now for the output column. Steve required that all of the conditions were met. This means there is only one true value in the output occurring down here, where A is 1, B is 1, C is 1, and D is 0. Why is D 0? Because we define D as the question, did the date prospect grow up in Texas? And Steve wants the answer to be no. I could have defined D differently to say did not grow up in Texas. That would technically be fine, I get to define that variable any way I choose. However, I feel it is more confusing to include a negative within the definition. This would require a mental flipping of logic in our heads. And now for the algebraic phrasing. Another way of saying that Steve requires all of these traits is to say that he requires trait A and trait B and trait C and trait D to meet his standards. 
so I include the AND operator between all of these variables. Why the NOT operator just for D? Because Steve wants a YES for ABC, but a NO for D.